Watch a videos of people playing with slime, cutting soap, tapping their nails on glass, and whispering have in common. They elicit a kind of tingling sensation in the back of the head and down the spine, referred to as ASMR. Every day, millions of people watch videos on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch in order to elicit this tingling response. The thing is, we don't know much about why it happens. I reached out to one of the authors of one of the first studies about ASMR to learn what we do know about this tingling sensation. My name's Dr. Nick Davis from Manchester Metropolitan University in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm a psychologist and a neuroscientist, and uh, I study ASMR, or Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Autonomous meaning uh, happens to yourself, uh, so it's something that you experience yourself. Sensory because it's purely sensory, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to make a movement to make it happen. Uh, and a meridian response is a euphemism for orgasm. And I think uh, ASMR has been described as a sort of brain orgasm or head orgasm. And I think that's where the term comes from. People in the ASMR community will be fairly keen to tell you it's not a, a sexual phenomenon. It's in fact, it's associated with um, close personal attention that's not sexual. Is ASMR psychological? Is it biological? Is it cultural? Like, what are some of the different reasons that we think that it occurs? There are definitely physiological responses in people's bodies when they view ASMR. So your heart rate will slow, your uh, skin electrical responses change. So something is happening in your body, but that's presumably triggered by some kind of psychological state. So you associate eating noodles or watching people wrap presents with some kind of psychological state of comfort or calmness. And so those two things are, are related. We don't know exactly how, and I think that's uh, what we need, we as scientists need to explore a bit further. Why is ASMR so hard to study? Why did we not know about it until fairly recently? Like my understanding is that we didn't really know about ASMR before YouTube happened. I think ASMR is a universal sensation. So I think it's always been around. There's something a bit weird about it. It's a very weird uh, sensation and it's a very difficult thing to describe to another person. And so maybe until there was a, a nucleus of uh, ASMR artists who are all using the same language to describe the same phenomenon, then like a community of people talking about the same thing. But before that, uh, you know, different people would have a different term to describe what they were feeling. So I think it's always been there. Is it something that you can study um, physiologically? Like, could you study it using like an MRI machine or is there other, can you actually like, sense it happening in the brain or is it just something that you learn by uh, getting people's you know, feedback on a survey or something like that? In principle, that would be a really good thing to do. It'd be great to put people in an MRI scanner and then give them ASMR and see which parts of the brain change. Unfortunately, uh, ASMR sort of requires you to be a bit relaxed and an MRI scanner for people who've never been in is an extremely noisy environment. It's a really unpleasant, narrow tube uh, that clanks and whirs and does all sorts of horrible noises. So just practically, it's very difficult to get people to experience MRI in that environment. So what do people find comforting about, you know, soap cutting or about like slime or people eating things? Like what is, what is comforting about that or why does that trigger it? Is it like the sound? Is it the way that it looks? Is it both? Well, we think it's probably uh, a bit of everything. It's a multi-sensory experience. Uh, if we take the example of mouth sounds, so the sounds of people eating, when do you ever hear somebody's mouth sounds? Well, you only really hear it when you're very close to them. So if you imagine a young child being cradled by its mother, who's eating maybe a piece of toast, uh, that's the sort of time when, when that child would experience another person's mouth sounds. So if we think of mouth sounds as a trigger for that sense of being comforted and warm, then, then that sort of makes sense. So what about slime? Like, why do people like to watch slime videos? Like, what is the appeal? Is it like the colors? Is it like the sticking sound that it makes when you touch it? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things going on with slime. One thing we have found is that when people watch ASMR videos, they like a lot of detailed action with the fingers. So uh, if you watch somebody doing something really carefully, that's, that's quite triggering for ASMR. It gives you something to focus on. Uh, and I think that's true in these slime videos where you don't really see anything except people's hands you know, 
folding and looping slime around. So what uh, makes people feel ASMR? Like what are some of the common things that trigger the response? A lot of uh, triggers are idiosyncratic, meaning they, they are unique to each person. But there are a few really universal sorts of triggers. Uh, one universal trigger is whispering. So here we are with our road. Uh, if you watch videos on YouTube of people producing ASMR, uh, they, they tend to get very close to a microphone and they whisper. Uh, so whispering is a really strong trigger for, for ASMR. Uh, similarly, any uh, stimulus that makes you feel sort of warm and comforted, I think that's a very strong ASMR kind of trigger. Do you think it's used for like to calm down or for like meditation purposes? I've heard of people watching ASMR videos to go to sleep, for example. Like, is that why people watch these videos? Like, what is the kind of reasoning behind why it's so enjoyable and it's, it's such a popular category? One thing we do know from uh, colleagues who have studied the physiology of ASMR is that it is associated with uh, the sorts of things that happen during relaxation. So a slowing of the heart rate and changes in uh, uh, electrical activity in the skin. So certainly something physiological is happening during ASMR. Uh, so it's not purely psychological. Um, and, and that seems to be associated with relaxation and getting people into a sort of more calm state. So I don't think I've ever actually felt the tingling feeling. Is it something that you think and that other scientists believe everyone feels? Or is it like only certain people are able to access this part of their brain? I think it is possible that not everyone feels it, but I suspect that it is universal across uh, all people. I think it's uh, a sensation that's um, associated with um, a sort of warm, pleasurable sensation. And I suspect when you describe that sensation to, to people, they say, oh yeah, I get that from a haircut or uh, I get that from listening to a boring conversation. So when people talk about ASMR, they are all talking about the same phenomenon. And that's very useful because there are lots of conditions where people are not always talking about the same thing. So pain is an example. Two, two people talking about pain won't always be talking about the same thing. Is there a sense if it serves like an evolutionary purpose or why do we have this feeling? ASMR is very much related to comfort and security and the sort of feelings that you have as a child that you really get from a probably a maternal bond. All primates pretty much uh, have a close pair bond with their parents and quite a lot of animals across the animal kingdom also do that. So I wonder if ASMR is a very universal sensation that is created during parental bonding. This one genre I find really weird and is super popular is like an eye exam or a doctor's visit. And what I find confusing about that is that it's not comforting at all. Like the idea of going to the dentist is not very comforting or soothing or makes me want to go to sleep at all. We'll scrape the majority of the extra gunk off your teeth. There's something there about intimacy. You're having somebody come into your personal space uh, in a non-sexual way, but just in a really close way. Uh, and I think that doesn't happen in very many situations in, in our daily life. Uh, these are situations where people will get very close to you and, it, and that's a very sort of comforting and uh, safe kind of situation. I've seen a lot of these a ASMR videos where it's like really bright colors or things are being lined up in a very like satisfying organized way or like all cards all knocking over or something like that. Yeah I think there's something uh, quite powerful about that sense of uh, completion so something that suddenly falls into place or something becomes symmetrical and I think certainly for some people that is a trigger for uh, a sense of satisfaction and, and maybe that does link to ASMR. I, I don't think that triggers ASMR in all people though. I think it's, it's very much a, a very personal thing. It prompts questions and I think that's what I like about it. As a psychologist I'm, I'm curious about what people think and as a neuroscientist I want to know what their brain is up to. So for me it's a way of uh, exploring some sensations that have not really been looked at before. Nick Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I really, really appreciate it. Not so. Thank you very much.